Hi everyone, welcome back to the Flask Mastery Series. I'm Gority Golden and in this video, I will guide you through the process of pushing your first flask up to GitHub. So let's dive in. So the first thing we need to do is to ensure that our flask app is ready. If you haven't created one yet, check out my previous video on setting up a basic flask application. The link is within the video description. Once you have your app code ready, make sure it runs without any issues on your local machine. Now let's initialize Git in our project. If you are new to working with Git and GitHub, I have attached the link to my Git and GitHub series within the video description. So now let's go ahead and open a new terminal. So for us to be able to initialize our project with Git, we are going to go ahead and do this using the git init command. So this command creates a new subfolder within our working directory. Though on the side panel, I think it is not visible. So when you check out within the path to your Flask basics directory, you can see that we are having this subfolder for Git. So by default, if it is your first time working with Git, especially for those who are using the Windows operating system, this subfolder of Git is always hidden. So for you to be able to view it, you always have to go ahead and enable the hidden items to true under this view tab, then the hidden items. So we can see that right now my checkbox is enabled. So if I uncheck it, you can see that the folder is now hidden. And if we enable the checkbox for the hidden items, you can see that we are now able to view this subfolder. So this pretty shows us that we have successfully initialized our repository. And we also confirmed that with this response that was displayed in the terminal that initialized empty git repository in this path. To avoid pushing unnecessary files to GitHub, let's go ahead and create a git ignore file. So this file tells git which files or directories to always ignore when we push our changes to the remote repository. So we shall create the new file that dot git ignore file, then you press enter. So within that dot git ignore file, we always add the files or the directories that we don't want to include having we pushed our changes to our remote repositories. So for this case, we are going to go ahead and neglect or ignore the virtual environment, this subfolder. And you also see that apparently we are having this other subfolder for the Python cache. So we are going to go ahead and ignore these two subfolders. So first of all, when you run a git status, we can see that we have the untracked files, but I want you to take note of this, the two subfolders, the Python cache subfolder and the, the virtual environment subfolder. So whenever it is a subfolder, we always have this slash. And if it is a file, it is just the file along with its extension, if any. So we shall go ahead and type this. Same applies to our virtual environment subfolder, basics m, then the slash. So having we added the git ignore file, we can now go ahead and add our changes to the staging area so that we can push our changes to the committing area. So for us to achieve this, we shall use the git add space dot. So this command adds our changes to the staging area while ignoring the folders that we have added in the git ignore file. So when we run a git status, we can now see that our changes have been added to the staging area with the fact that the text color of our files that have been staged is now green. So from the staging area, we always move to the committing area. So for us to be able to commit our changes, we use the git commit dash m and the dash m flag stands for the message we are going to push these changes with. 
So for now with the fact that this is our first Flask application, we can go ahead and pass in the message that says first Flask app changes. Take note of the fact that the message that we are passing in is actually a string. And whenever it is a string, we go ahead and embed it within the double quotes. So we shall press enter. And this is the successful response to show that our changes have been from the staging area to the committing area. So having we committed, this always captures the current state of our project within the Git repository. And don't forget that whenever we initialize our project, it becomes a local repository. So apparently we are having a local repository of our Flask application. So for now we are going to head over to git and create a new repository that is going to be the remote repository for our application so on the github page we are going to go ahead and create a new repository so the owner by default is me the person who is currently logged in so the repository name must always be relevant to the project that you are working on initially so with the fact that we have just created a simple flask basics application we can go ahead and pass in the name as flask basics so the name i'm actually typing in here i'm trying to use a naming conversion of the, the variables in programming the pascal naming conversion so the description for the project is always optional but you can always go ahead and add it. And the privacy depends on what you exactly want. If you want to make the repository public or private. So for now we can keep the repository public. And initializing, initializing of the readme is always optional. So while the repository has been created successfully, we can always copy the URL to that remote repository. So within our terminal, we are going to go ahead and add this URL to our local repository so that we have the ability of pushing our changes to the remote repository. So the first thing we want to do is to go ahead and use the git remote, add origin, then we paste that URL and then press enter. So when you successfully add the repository, most of the times it doesn't return any output but for you to be able to confirm that the url was successfully added to our local repository we use the git remote dash v so the output shows that the url of the remote repository was successfully added to our local repository so as of now we are going to go ahead and push our changes to our remote repository so for us to achieve that, we use the command git push. And if it is the first time we are pushing these changes to the remote repository, we always have to pass in the branch to which we are pushing. And when you check out here, by default, we have been working on our master branch. So we shall say git push dash u. So the dash u stands for the upstream, which is our remote repository. So dash u origin and we are pushing to the master branch. So we go ahead and include the branch name. So this command will actually push all our changes that we have created within our project to our remote repository. So when we redirect by pressing control and then clicking on this, it will redirect us to our remote repository and the changes that we initially added will be updated. So this is our remote repository currently and when you check out you can pretty see that the virtual environment folder has not been added to our remote repository and same applies to the python cache subfolder. And we also have access to our app.python file and these are the initial changes that we are having. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe for more plus and github
have tutorials. Happy coding.